fragment. Just a little phrase. But you know, when we're watching commercials, the um, there's one thing, or actually there's a few things that they do on these commercials. It's not just coming up with these phrases. That's a big part of it because they know that they can come up with these phrases and they'll stick in our heads and that's why they sing them a lot of times. Did you ever get a song stuck in your head? Yeah. Yes. Be yeah. 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 Get it out. That's probably an advertiser that came up with that. And they know that those songs get stuck in your head. And so they come up with them and they know that when you get hungry, you're going to think, I want my life. It's my life. It's out there. Oh, Exactly. We're going to watch a couple of commercials. But what I want you to watch for while we're watching the commercials, especially on this first one, I want you to watch what the lady is doing. Is she looking at the audience? Or in this case, the camera. You haven't seen it yet, so you don't know. Is she looking at the audience or is she looking away? How does she use her voice? Does she change the pitch of her voice? Which means, does her voice go up high and does it go down low? Does she, or does she talk like a robot? Is it monotone? That would be pretty boring to listen to, wouldn't it? Your teacher talked like that all day long. We were two now. We have to be quiet so that we can hear what she's saying, okay? Is that too loud? No, no. Because next to my Oh. Take the finished challenge. I'm Robin C. Joss, and my website is Big Red Kitchen. I do believe in standards. Cascade was a disappointment because you have dried on food stains. But when I took the finished challenge, I realized I don't need to settle. I like to make roast beef, and it leaves a lot of baked on grease. So I threw it in the dishwasher. I did not pre rinse. But when I opened the dishwasher, everything was very shiny and no more gunk left on my dishes. I used to use Cascade. Now I use Finish Quantum. Take the finished challenge for yourself. If you don't see a difference, it's free. We're going to talk about some advertising techniques in just a few minutes. I know that you've talked about some of them before. I may have a new one that you've not heard of, and I may have some that you have heard of, and we're going to see how this commercial fits in. Let me turn that down for a second. This next commercial, it's a little bit different. And you're not going to see just one person talking to you, but I thought that I thought I'd show it because it's using at least one, maybe two of the techniques that we're going to talk about in just a minute and it's a new way of doing commercials advertisers have caught on to it it's called a flash mob have you guys seen a flash mob yeah. 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 rj yeah. rj yeah. if your name's not rj you should be quiet rj they have flash mob in commercials like uh it was about it was one with the model where he was late for oh. yeah do you do you yeah. know can you kind of describe a flash mob where everybody where it's a whole bunch of people together in a group and they just Dance, I think. Mm -hmm. They dance. So usually what happens is that they get, they get a whole bunch of people and only they know that they're going to do it. And they'll show up in a really public place. The one you're going to see I think is at a train station, really busy train station. And they show up and music starts playing and one person starts dancing yeah. and then another person joins. But it's the same dance. They're not just dancing crazy. It's synchronized. And then another and another and it swells and it grows. Well, they used to just do that for fun. Just some people thought, wouldn't that be cool? Just to see what kind of reactions they got. Advertisers have caught on to this and they've twisted it a little bit and they're using it for commercials now. We're going to see how it fits into our advertising techniques. How do I get this back to the menu, guys? Can you show me? We don't want to play that. Is it this? Okay. Alright, thank you. Yeah. Alright. I'll have to turn it back up, I guess. Oh. Push play again. 
Someone's trying to convince you to think what they want you to think or to buy what they want you to buy. So when you get up to present, you're going to try to make us buy your product. If you get a product that you don't like, then you need to just convince us that you do and convince us that we should like it too. Okay? But you need, you need to remember our really important things. We're going to look at the audience, everybody else in the room. We're going to speak loudly so that no one is straining to hear what we're saying. We're going to speak clearly, which means we're going to pronounce all of our words so that everyone can hear. We're not going to mumble or talk to the back of it so that nobody can hear what we're saying. Okay? Well, I, th I think you may be disappointing yourself if you did that. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a foldable. A foldable, and I'll show you what that is. I've got one right up here. Whoops. There went my paper. I've got a foldable like this so that we can write what we're going to go over on these 
um, flaps. So it'll go along with you and do that. But everyone's going to get one. I was going to let you guys fold them, but then I thought we're probably a little limited on time with everything I want to do. So I'm just going to pass them out. Could you give uh, your neighbor one of those? Did you get one, sweetie? There you go. All right. All right, at the very top, does everyone have one now? You can use markers for this if you want to. I use markers on mine. I like to use markers sometimes when I'm taking notes. It just makes things stand out to me a little more. And I'll put different information in different colors. So on that top flap, you're going to write advertisement methods. We're only going to go over three of them. I know that you've probably done more than that already. You need to write that up there. Just a minute to do that. I know you guys, when you get markers, you want to doodle and draw little pictures too, and you can do that later. But right now, let's stick with just the words that are up there so we have time to get through this. Devin, you need to start writing. Ralph, are you writing? <laughs> okay. You must have got that up there. And the first, oh, the first one that you're going to write on that very next flap down is assertion. Have you guys talked about assertion before? Is that a method? I thought this might be the one method that you have not talked about before. But you may have, and it just has a different name. We'll see when we start talking about that. I'm going to let you get a search and written down. Okay. Who thinks they might know what that word means? A search. What, yes. The next the section goes on the next little. The next little flap down. Yes. A little piece that's sticking out. Yes, sir. Well, it's a type of uh, advertisement method that they use in commercials. But what if I said the word assertive? You know what assertive means? Our like uh, Yes, ma'am. I can guarantee. I can see maybe a little bit. Assertion or assertive means that you are telling someone something as if it is a fact. No question. You're, and you know what? Advertisers, when they t tell you something and they state it like it's a fact, and they always do, are they always telling the truth? No. 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 They might be. They could be telling the truth, but they could be stretching the truth a little bit. So, our little definition for assertion is, and let me get this turned where you can read it. Enthusiastically 